Today, I'm looking at the EcoFlow app. That's all. I'm just walking you through pretty much every aspect of the app. I've got it installed here on Mac OS. This is actually the iPad version. Uh, it runs fine on an M1 Mac. And um, you can also install it on your phone, of course, on iOS if you've got an iPhone or Android. And it works really reliably. It's very, very stable. I've never had it crash, never had it cause any problems. Once you've got your unit connected to it, it works fine. So when you first enter the app, you are asked to log in. So EcoFlow are asking for um, login information and you need to kind of register, which is always a bit annoying. But uh, you add your devices here and I've just got my Delta Max here. So um, you immediately just get an overview of it and uh, you've got your charge percentage here at the moment. So I just click on that and it says disconnected. Sometimes it can take some time to reconnect to the device. So don't be sort of put off if you sat there waiting for maybe uh, t t you know 20 seconds or so while the app reconnects to your device even though it is on of course it won't connect if your device is turned off uh, so at the top we get our status so what this is showing us is the fact that at the moment we have charge coming into the uh, into the delta max and obviously it has a charge percentage of 80.87 percent it gives you the uh, temperature as well on the left hand side it's actually in fahrenheit on here on, on my um, on my iphone it's in in celsius i'd prefer it in celsius but i'm not sure why it's in fahrenheit on this uh, ipad version of the um, of the app and at the top it gives you an idea of how long it will take for the unit to be charged so you can see that we i've got another two hours 47 minutes for it to charge up below that in this section we've got our input and output areas and uh, at the moment i'm just looking at the output so the device is currently not powered up i've got nothing powered up on it i haven't got the ac inverter powered up here i haven't got the uh, 12 volt dc out and i haven't got any of the usb ports enabled but it still has an output of 78 watts and that's because i have an extra battery attached to it so while it's receiving some input and this input here is from solar it kind of divvies that up and will charge up the extra battery it kind of does that in a fairly sensible and smart way which is which is nice um so you know you're not just discharging one completely and then moving over to the smart battery it's sort of one charges the other and one then sort of is charged by the other and it does it all really nicely so yeah this input of 171 watts currently from solar is being divided up and uh, is charging the extra battery so there's our input and output and if i turn on the ac now and you can probably hear the beep in the background i've had a few things uh, turn on in the room and you can see that the ac inverter has 44 watts going out of it that's currently powering my uh, rme sound card and my two monitor speakers and a couple of lights and things like that nothing nothing uh, massively power hungry but that's fine and this graph constantly updates as long as you're in the app it doesn't sort of keep the history if you know what i mean so if you exit out of it you won't go back into it and see it if you haven't been in it if you know what i mean so yeah there's a there's no sort of history kept in the background you have to actually be in it to keep this graph running you've also got the status of x boost here you can enable or disable x boost and uh, x boost is the uh, ability to draw more power from the mains inverter if you're happy for a small voltage drop certain devices are absolutely fine with a small voltage drop and that means you can really push this thing to kind of huge amounts of power outputs and uh, below that i have the status of the extra battery uh, you wouldn't normally see this so if you don't have one connected you just won't see this section at all but at the moment i've got 102 watts i think 96 watts going into this and uh, 90 it's up to 94.17 percent so you've got a clear reading there of exactly how much is in that battery and then our 12 volt dc i've got absolutely nothing connected to that at the moment but I, you know i can still enable that on the device and then we have the USB side of things. My my actual laptop that I'm doing the recording on here is connected to that. So if I enable that, you should. It's now turned on a few lights, a few more lights in here. And you'll see that on one of the USB-C ports here that we now have 90, 13 watts, 13 watts, 19 watts, various amount. That's, that's the actual power now going into my laptop and charging it up. So there's the output section, really nice and clear. It gives you all the information you need to need to see, and you can you know power up everything you need to see. Uh, you need to. Let's have a quick switch over to the input section. So this is the uh, solar input, and uh, 
you can see the graph on there is much more sort of all over the place, which you would expect because, well, this is actually nice and flat. And the reason it's nice and flat is because it's a really overcast day at the moment. Uh, there is, uh, I mean, it's bright, but it's completely, you know, solid cloud cover. So we're getting fairly consistent output here. But um, yeah, there's one starting to peek through a little bit now. So that's why we've got our little spike here. But we've got constant monitoring of the input. However, this input does change because, of course, you might have some input coming from AC as well. Or, of course, when it's discharging, the extra battery that's attached to it, the smart extra battery, will then start saying, well, I'm going to put some input, I'm going to provide some input too to keep the, to keep the device topped up and add to the uh, add to the usage of the device. So that will class as input on here because it's going into the other sort of main unit. And um, then down at the bottom here, we have the status of the uh, two batteries, and I can click on one of those and get a separate sort of graph here just for the extra battery saying how long it's going to take to charge back up to 100% if it's charging, which it is at the moment. It's, uh, it's got an input 44 watts because we're getting some uh, power from solar. And uh, you, get same, you get the idea. It's the same information there as well. I'll just go into the uh, settings as well and run through those quickly. So you can rename your device here. I've got mine set to Delta Max. By standard, it's set to the serial number of the device. Discharge and charge level, well, that just allows you to uh, say, well, I actually only want to discharge it to 10% and maybe only have it charge up to 80%. So you can improve the uh, life of the batteries by doing that. Or maybe if you want to put it into storage, you might say, well, I only want it discharged to 30% for long-term storage. So I'm going to set this to 30% and then just leave it on. And I don't have to monitor it. I don't have to keep my eye on it. You know, it'll just stop at 30%. You know it's ready for storage then. And uh, the AC charge speed, if you have the switch on the back in one position, it'll just pull the absolute maximum from the mains out. And that is a huge amount of power, which if you don't have the main, right mains cable attached, the one that came in the box, they're going to get quite hot. So be careful which cable you use with that because it does draw an enormous amount of power, particularly in a 220 volt. 240 volt region or 230 volt region uh, but this can be varied so at the moment i've got it set to 800 you can drop this down to anything as low as 200 and anything as high as 2000 watts uh, so i think 800 is a nice sort of reasonable amount i you know, don't really if i'm charging on ac which i rarely ever barely ever do i don't really need it any higher than that car input can be changed as well between eight amps and four amps if you uh, don't want to sort of charge it up or uh, put too much um, drain on your car battery then you can reduce that in the uh, in the settings as well you can disable the beep on the device you can have the smart generator you can set the on off uh, times of the smart generator so the smart generator is a device from uh, from ecoflow as well which is essentially like a normal generator it's a sort of an actual engine generator and so you could say well okay when this my power station gets to um 20 percent charge i want to fire up the smart generator to, to top it up uh, so go you know go back to old school combustion engine um charging and power generation so uh, that's sort of what that setting is for there then you've got unit timeout which is if there's no no drain or nothing being used it'll just turn off and turn off the wi-fi and everything like that screen timeout makes sense ac timeout so this is when there's no power being drawn from the ac mains inverter it will turn off automatically after a certain amount of time probably a good idea in most cases because inverters just use power by themselves uh, even if nothing's actually being drawn from them so it's a good idea to let that turn off after a certain amount of time then we have the ability to check for firmware updates and lab features which has only got one thing in at the moment ac always on which means that when the unit comes back gets power back after being off it will uh, automatically re-enable the mains inverter could be handy depending on what you're using the device for and then help center and then specifications is nice actually it gives you a full list of exactly what the uh, inputs and outputs of the device are for both the smart battery and the uh, main unit and there we go there's a full look around the ecoflow app if you've got any questions put them in the comments and uh, thanks for watching